A number of years ago, we began to realize the important role that Gareth Jones, a Welsh journalist, had played in being one of the very early reporters who told the truth to the world about what was happening in Soviet Ukraine in 1932-33, what we now call the whole of the more. So when we recognized Gareth Jones as being such a pivotal character in the story of the whole of the more, a group of us here in Canada began a campaign to recognize him. We started in 2006 by placing a trilingual historical marker, a plaque, at the University of Aberystwyth in Wales, at his university where he studied as a student. Um, what made this plaque unique was that it is in English and Ukrainian, which makes sense, but it's also in Welsh Gaelic. So it's the world's first plaque that's trilingual, Ukrainian, English, and Welsh Gaelic. And of course, the Welsh, who are a small nation that sometimes has faced oppression, were delighted by what we'd done. Based on that work, I began corresponding and talking to the family of Gareth Jones, distant relatives, uh, the Cauley family, and asked them whether or not we could get permission to reprint his 1933 diary. And in fact, we did that. We published Tell Them We Are Starving, which was the actual diary. In trans we transcribed it because his handwriting was difficult to read. Uh, Roy Gamash wrote a forward to it, and we published that and distributed that worldwide. So the diary as a, as a piece of evidence is now available to students and scholars around the world. Finally, in more recent years, we decided that we needed to preserve the actual diaries and other correspondence files that Gareth Jones left behind. So with the support of the Temerte Foundation and the Ukrainian Canadian Civil Liberties Foundation and the Holdemore Research and Education Consortium and the Ukrainian National Women's League of America, we actually paid for the digitization of the Gareth Jones papers, all of them. And copies of that were placed at the National Library of Ukraine, at the University of Toronto, and at several other institutions around the world. So again, a student anywhere in the world, they can be in Kiev, they can be in Jakarta, they can be in Moscow, can see this evidence for themselves. They don't have to believe me, they don't have to believe you, they can get access to it. Finally, in the last few years, I said, well, we've done the one plaque, it's a beautiful plaque. It has a bas relief sculpture by Ole Halisiuk, a, a Toronto-based sculptor. I said, we should probably do these plaques in other locations. And so with a colleague in Wales, Mick Antoniev, and again, Philip Coley from the Gareth Jones family, the descendants, we put up a plaque in Barrie, Wales, which was where Gareth Jones was born. That was done a year ago. And the third plaque, I'm delighted to report to you or to your viewers is going to go into the National Library of Ukraine this October. Now, unfortunately, I'm not able with great regret to be there for that ceremony, but the National Library of Ukraine will now also have its own plaque. It was supposed to have been there in 2022, but of course we know what's happening. So we had to delay it. But finally, we've decided that even with this genocidal war that Putin is waging against Ukraine and Ukrainians, we're going to put the plaque there. And so this October, Gareth Jones will be remembered in Kiev at the National Library, where visitors to the library, students, scholars, journalists will see uh, what an important contribution this man made, this very young man. He was only 27 years old when he visited Soviet Ukraine and saw for himself the great horrors of the whole Demor and 30 years old when he was murdered under suspicious circumstances in China, we think by the Soviets, 88 years ago, uh, this man told the world the truth. And so we're honoring him as a righteous journalist, as someone who told the truth. And with our friends in Kiev and people like you and others around the world, you know, we've raised the funds. It wasn't a lot of money, but we've raised the funds to do this. So it's just one of those kinds of projects that I think are long overdue. And even in the context of the war against Ukraine and Ukrainians, it's an important project because it recovers an almost forgotten historical memory. 
And that's good for us in Ukraine and in the diaspora. Uh, well, thank you. But uh, where and when uh, were you present during the another acts of uh, perpetuation of Gareth Jones? Uh, yes, I, I, I was actually present in May of 2006 when we unveiled the very first plaque at the University of Aberystwyth. It was a very moving event. I mean, members of his family were present. I think everyone was surprised that a group of Canadians and later some Americans got together and did this because we did it knowing it was the right thing to do. We did it on our own. We didn't sort of make a big procedure out of it. We simply said, this needs to be done. How much is it going to cost? We raised the funds. We contacted the university and we did it. And that plaque is now in the Great Hall of the University of Aberystwyth, where literally tens of thousands of students have seen it. So these are students who are going to say, back in 2006, and these are you know 20-year-olds now who weren't even alive then, who are going to say, who's Gareth Jones? Oh, he's a journalist. Oh, he talked about, he wrote about what was happening in Soviet Ukraine in 1932-33, a genocide. He talked about what we now call the Holodomor, and they may be inspired to become good journalists telling the truth themselves about what's happening in, in the 21st century. So for me, being present at the University of Aberystwyth, meeting my Welsh colleagues as academics and journalists and so on, and saying, we honor this man who many people in the world had forgotten about. I mean, he died in, you know, a long, long time ago, 88 years ago. Most people, other than his family members and a few specialists, had probably long since forgotten who Gareth Jones was. But we recovered his memory, and we brought it into the 21st century. And we're doing it in Ukraine, and we're doing it in Wales or in the British Isles. And it's now been cemented through books and articles have been published about him and a website that deals with his history. And there may even be someday a, a scholarship in his name. I certainly hope so. So we're trying to do all of this as kind of building an awareness of the importance of good journalism and of the particular historical record of this man, Gareth Jones. I'm sure you know there's a, a film now on Netflix called Mr. Jones. I mean, it's a little bit fictional and the way it treats his his character and what he did, you know, that's Hollywood, as we would say here in the West, that's Hollywood. But students of mine have seen Mr. Jones and they go, what's, is this true? And I, we talk about the film and, and they go, wow, what an, what a remarkable man. So just think about it. He was 30 years old the day he was murdered in China. Probably, you know, people say by Chinese bandits, it could very well have been uh, a, a Soviet uh, assassination. We'll, we'll never know, probably until Moscow is finally defeated and we can get access to those archives. But he was murdered. That No one doubts that. Um, so this young life was cut off, a very promising life, the life of a, of a serious journalist, destroyed. And yet, he's still alive. He's still alive for us today. And again, I'm so very sorry I can't be there in cave today or whenever this uh, video is shown to be there with my friends and my colleagues to honor him in person. But I will return to cave someday and I will stand at that plaque and I will say, Lubomir Lechuk from Kingston, Ontario, the son of political refugees who came to Canada after World War II, remembered a guy called Gareth Jones and brought him back to Ukraine for Ukrainians to remember. And we've tied the diaspora back together with Ukraine. And that's what we're all doing, especially now. You know, today, you must know this, Alexandro, even better than I do. When I was a boy, who knew what Ukraine was? Who knew where Ukraine was? People said it doesn't exist. And all this kind of stuff. Um, now the whole world knows about Ukraine. It's tragic, the circumstances that they've learned about Ukraine, but the reality of it is the world now knows about Ukraine like never before. And now, 90 years after the whole of the war destroyed millions of Ukrainians' lives, 
we're not only honoring the truth tellers like Gareth Jones and Malcolm Muggeridge and James Mace and others, uh, but we're also telling the world about what Ukrainians experienced. And we're linking together again, the diaspora and the homeland. And we're doing it in ways that I think are positive. I think that move us forward. It's not about looking back and saying, that's Bill and that's Muchle. It's about talking about the good things, the heroes, the men and women who are fighting for Ukraine today on the front, the truth tellers, the righteous people who stood for Ukraine, who stood for truth, who stood with the right against the wrong. And that's that's Gareth Jones. You know, I'm sorry I never met the guy, uh, but he seems to me to have been someone I wish I had. And so in my own small way here from a very small Ukrainian community in a place called Kingston, Ontario, that most people probably in Ukraine have never heard of, and there's no Ukrainian community here to speak of, maybe 30 families when I was a boy, and now, you know, come to Kingston, and they're all gone. There's newcomers now, which is good, well, sad, but good. We have new people coming from Ukraine because of the war. But the community I grew up in, there were there was one or two people who survived the whole of the war, my Krasna Baba. Um, and I remember when she told me stories about what she'd survived in the whole of the war. I couldn't believe her. There were no books about it in English. Uh, there were a few survivors but they were very traumatized by what they'd gone through and didn't talk about it much. I'd never learned about it at high school or at university because my professor said, oh, that's all anti-Soviet propaganda. It's not that they were pro-Soviet, but they just, there was nothing. Well, again, now, think about it. The world now knows about the whole of the war. Many countries, most recently the European Union, the Vatican and so on have recognized the whole of the war as a genocide. Canada did that many years ago. Unfortunately, still the United Kingdom, the United States, Australia have still not officially recognized the whole of the war as a genocide. And so one of the things that I'm also doing at this time is helping coordinate an international campaign to get the British government, His Majesty's government, to recognize the whole Demore as a genocide. That has not been done. People talk about it as if, you know, there were debates in Parliament. Well, that's one thing, but it's not the same thing. The British in 1932, 33, 34 knew about the whole of the Moor. Well, nobody, they didn't call it that, but they knew the famine was happening. They covered it up. 90 years ago, the United States government diplomatically recognized the Soviet Union, even though there was some information coming out about the famine. They recognize it. So this is the year, this 90th year, that we need to get the British government and the American government to officially designate the whole of war as a genocide, like Canada, like Germany, like the European Parliament, and so on. It's important as a boost to the morale of the Ukrainians who are fighting and defending Ukraine today against the genocidal agenda of the KGB men and the Kremlin. That's why this is important. It's not about so much the past. We can't bring back the victims. Millions of Ukrainians, are. we can't bring them back. But what we can do is maybe explain to the world that this is not the first time Ukrainians and the Ukrainian nation have faced a genocidal agenda from the Kremlin. And this is not the first time Ukrainians have had to resist and fight uh, for their freedom, for their independence, for their place in Europe. And so we should honor those who told the truth about who we are, who we were, and remember them, because it's those good people, men and women, who have supported Ukraine throughout the decades, if not the centuries, that truly deserve recognition as uh, important figures, truth tellers, uh, good women and men who deserve our honor and our praise. So that's, you know, that's what we've done. And, I, and I'm very grateful to all the organizations and individuals, all of us volunteers, by the way, who have raised the money, done the work, and made sure that this gets done, including our colleagues and comrades in, in the National Museum, uh, sorry, at the National Library in Ukraine, in Kiev.